This is your season of grace with your host, Patrick Henry Eddett. Get ready for Grace Revolution. What I want to talk about covenant, I came face to face uh, the reality of the power of covenant. The word covenant is from the Hebrew word. I've not looked it up in the Greek word. I've not studied it in Greek. Greek is the language of the New Testament. But covenant is rooted in the Old Testament. The letter to the Hebrews talks about covenant. I think that's the only aspect. Galatians also talk about covenants, the two covenants. The covenant of Sinai. But they make reference, all of them by way of making commentary and reference to the covenant that is rooted in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is about covenant, testament, edume. Whoa. So to un- have an understanding of covenant, you need to study it in Hebrew. The word berit or biritu in Hebrew that is rendered as covenant in English is has to do with chain. So to understand covenant, you have to know what a chain is. A chain. When a criminal is chained to a pillar, to a post, that means he's yoked, connected to a post. If the post does not move, he cannot move. When two people are yoked together, are chained together, like two criminals, handcuffed one to another, they either run together or they cannot go anywhere. Am I talking? If they must run, for example, your this leg to the other one chained together, this one and this one chained together, that means you are to sync your movement. You have to move in synchronized steps if you don't synchronize your steps you will either break the ankle of the other the stronger will break the ankle of the other am i talking so chain when two people are chained together the stronger if they are not in agreement the stronger will destroy will kill the the weaker that's covenant So when we say covenant is a chain that binds different parties together. A chain that links one person to another such that if one is going this way, if this one is not going the same way, there will be a problem. So by covenant, God chains himself to the man he has made covenant with. That's what covenant is. He's chained to the one in the covenant. It means where he goes, he expects you to go there. And he does not go to a wrong place. That means you will never end in a wrong place. So, covenant is powerful. That's why when a man and a woman are chained together in the covenant of marriage and they don't go the same way, there must be be a breaking. There is no way. If a man is going this way, a wife is going this way, the stronger will destroy the weaker. There can be nothing other than that. If it is the wife that is stronger than the man, it will destroy the man. If it is the man that is stronger than the woman, it will destroy the woman. Because you are chained together, you are bound to be together. The only thing is that you, you are better learn to synchronize your steps. That's you move together. And so when you are chained to God in a covenant and you don't walk in step with him, you will get broken. You get broken. There's no way. That's why so many of those children, they carry his name, but they are broken. The devil takes advantage of their inability to sing with God. Oh my God, I feel like doing something. Covenant is what changes 
destiny. Covenant is what makes a weak, hopeless person stronger than a whole community. Am I talking to somebody? I say covenant is what can make one hopeless orphan stronger than the entire community. They cannot kill him. By covenant with God, God changed himself to you. He changed his supremacy, his sovereignty, his authority, his eternity, his wealth and power. He yokes it to you so that you own what God owns and God owns what you own. You don't understand. If you understood, your life would change forever. It's true. It's not a prayer, it's revelation. If you understand that by living in a covenant with God, that God brings the whole of who he is and offers it to you in a binding connection such that, look at God said to the people of Israel this scripture has been fascinating to my spirit forever Exodus chapter 19 if somebody is there with me, say I am here I am here, I am here no, no, let me hear you say I am here Exodus, Exodus chapter 19 from verse 3 then Moses went up to God and the Lord called the Lord called to him from the mountain and said this is what you are to say to the house of Jacob and what you are to tell the people of Israel <laughs> you yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles wings and brought you to myself now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant that means if you allow yourself synchronize with me in my binding myself to you if you walk how i walk where i walk and when i walk if you move when i move if you hate what i hate if you love what i love if you do what i do and say what i say if you synchronize your life with me your steps with me if my way becomes your way see what will happen then out of all nations then you can make it personal out of your family, your brothers and sisters, out of your colleagues, out of all Nigerians, all Aquibomites, out of all Uruan, Uruanists, and Mboists, out of all peoples, all nations, you will be my treasured. It's not every possession that is a treasured possession. I know it. There are things you touch that belong to me. I keep quiet. There are things you touch. I don't say anything. I do something. There are things you touch. I look at you. I don't say anything. There are things you touch. I look at you then say something. But there are things you touch. I don't, I don't look at you. I don't say something. I do something so immediately you know that this is precious to me god says you will be my treasure it means you will be in my treasury where i keep my secret and most precious thing is where i will keep you that means i will not keep you where things can meet you i will not keep you where people can can touch you they may talk but they cannot touch you God says, I will separate you from the rest and put you in my treasury and you will be my treasured possession. This is what covenant, this is what covenant makes you. Special wonder, wonder. You can know what I know now. You can see why I, what I see now. That people are predicting it will fail and I am dancing. That people are saying it will blind, it will be blind, but I boast on radio. Now, because I know, all I need to do is to synchronize with it to learn his ways to hate what he hates to love what he loves to do what he does to go where he goes and i synchronize with him a dog may not like me but he's backing but my own is to synchronize with him he may not like me but he cannot touch me why because i know where i am located i am located in the treasury of the almighty i am located in the treasury box or the treasure box the jewelry box of the Almighty. 
The day he wants to display his glory, he brings me out and he does me like this. He waves me like this to people. He will wave me. The day he wants to shine, how do you shine? Is it not by reaching out and bringing your gold? See, when a woman has a beautiful gold bracelet around her hand, that day she likes to wave and... Oh, glory must be... Even when the pastor is not saying raise your hand, I before God, I have a reason to raise my hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. On the day of adversity, God raises his gold. You see, adversity, can you see this one? This one is special. On the day of the storm, everybody is afraid, but God raises his special bracelet and says, You storm, can you notice me? Hello, witches, can you hear me? This one is precious to me. And so you can see, you can hear the backing of the witches, but it's displaying you. But it just wants you to know you are secure because you are a, pros- a possession that is treasured. Stand up and tell three people, now I know who you are. Now I know. Now I know. No wonder. No wonder. <laughs> Come and give me a high five, boy. Come and come, 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 come. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, you will be treasure possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom. Why? Covenant. Kingdom of priests, covenant. A holy nation, covenant. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. And if they respond, it will happen. If they don't respond, it will not happen. And so when Moses went and told them, he said, everything you have said, we shall do it. That's the beginning. Today, I just want to share with you the power, the wonder. I want to talk about victory by covenant connection I have taken a little time to break into bits and pieces for you to understand this little what it means to be in a covenant I pray in the name of Jesus that you will not just understand covenant but you will leave covenant yeah. lift up your hands by this administration an impartation of the spirit of understanding and connection of the mystery and blessing of covenant is coming upon you in the name of Jesus Joshua chapter 10 before you understand Joshua chapter 10 you have to get something from Joshua chapter 9 but let's begin from Joshua chapter 10 Joshua chapter 10 from verse 1 we we'll talk about the alliance of different kings against the people of Gibeon, the Gibeonites. Reading from verse 3. So, Adon is the king of Jerusalem, appealed to Hoham, king of Hebron, Piram, king of Jamuth, Japhar, king of Lachish, and Debel, king of Eglon. Come up. And help me attack Gibeon, he said, because it has made peace with Joshua and the Israelite. Look at New King James Version in that verse 4. Come up to me and help me that we may attack Gibeon, for it has made peace. He's saying the same thing. Do you know what it means to be to make peace with somebody? Make peace is to establish fellowship. If you had a problem before, that means you are restoring. You are bringing back a communion that has been broken. If you have never met anybody, that person before, making peace with somebody means establishing fellowship, communion. Covenant gives you fellowship. So when you are chained, two people chained together, 
Whether you like yourself or not, you will talk to one another. You talk to each other. Now I won't go peace. Don't disturb me. Ah uh-uh. ah. I said I won't go peace. Go now. Uh-uh. I know if you go without you now because we are in it together. And I know disturb me again. Oh, if I take you every time you the peace. If you go, if you peace this one finish. Don't disturb me. I want to sleep. Why are you talking to that person even when he doesn't want to talk to you? It's because you are chained together. Because you are chained together, you are in communion. In fellowship. <laughs> so, when God is in the covenant with you, you are in fellowship. That's why as a covenant child of God, there are certain things he asks you to do that he does not ask others. And you may be thinking of others. He says, shut up. We are bound together. Leave the rest. Psalm 25, verse 14. Put it on the screen. Okay. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. And he will show them his covenant. Let me see NIV. The Lord confides. Beautiful. I love this one. Shout hallelujah. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant. He confides. So covenant brings you so close. You don't confide in strangers. You confide in the closest person to you. Not just closeness in terms of proximity. Emotional, spiritual proximity. Somebody can be in America, you are in Nigeria, but it's the closest person to you. When something happens, you feel like telling the person first. Confiding. That's how God is close to the one that is in a covenant relationship. If the word of God says he confides, can the Lord confide in you? You know, very beautiful people, outstanding people can have problems. You understand what I mean? Ah, they don't see anything. They see their height. They see their face. They see their ear. They see their full nose. They see, they see all this. They don't see God. They don't see. So the first thing God did is that he stripped, stripped, broke, 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 broke. So that I know I don't I don't see nose again. I see you. In order so that you, you can hear. Because many of God's children, the problem they have is that they don't hear. As I'm talking to you now, there are some people, if you see what is in their mind, eh, you will faint. No, not here. They have not come today. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke vanity out of somebody's mind. In the name of Jesus. Who knows for how long God has been speaking to you to drop something and you cannot drop. Because you don't hear. You are so full of noises. Every strange noise in your spirit. I silence and I sack them in the name of Jesus. I'm talking about covenant. Go to that Joshua chapter 10. From verse 3 to 8. Okay. He said, Come, come up and help me attack Gibeon, he said, because it has made peace with Joshua and the Israelites. Then the five kings of the Amorites, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jamoth, Lachish, and Eglon joined forces. They moved up with all their troops and took up positions against Gibeon and attacked it. The Gibeonites then sent word to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal. Do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us. Help us because all the Amorite kings from the hill country have joined forces against us. So Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his entire army, including all the best fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. Hallelujah. As beautiful as that is, that is not the revelation God has asked me to share with you. I am Now, what has happened now is that Gibeon, the people of Gibeon have asked Joshua, please come. They are attacking us and Joshua has mobilized the whole army, the best army. And God is involved. Did you hear God? That verse says, and God said, don't do what? 
Don't be afraid of them. I will do what? I have given them into your hand. How did God become involved in this fight? This is not the fight of Israel. It's the fight of the Gibeonites. Am I talking to somebody? What it concern God and the Gibeonites? Nobody look for trouble with Israel. Though. When the people of Moab saw Israel coming, they summoned the king went and summoned Balaam. Say, come and curse. But this time around, there is no problem with Israel. Though. The problem is with Gibeon. Though. So how did the war, the battle of Gibeon, become the, God, the battle of Israel and then became the battle of God? Covenant connection. If you understand it, no demon can stand you. This is how one man can overcome a nation. Covenant connection. If you're, you know what If you're, a you are a and you know what Revelation. Now, if you go back to that same Joshua chapter 9, something happened. When Israel was advancing in victory, the people of, I of Gibeon heard about what God was doing with Israel. They were afraid and they ran to Israel to make a covenant. Long and short. Let's just read a little bit of it. However, verse 3, Joshua chapter 9, verse 3. However, when the people of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and I, they resorted to Arius. They went as a delegation whose donkeys were loaded with worn out sacks and old wineskins, cracked and mended. The men put worn and patched sandals on their feet and wore and wore and wore old clothes. All the bread of their food supply was dry and moldy. Then they went to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal and said to him and the men of Israel, We have come from a distant country. Lie is a lie. They were not distant, they were close but afraid. Make a treaty with us. Treaty means covenant. Did you hear me? Go and check your dictionary. Treaty means covenant. Make treaty with us. <laughs> the men of Israel said to the Hivites, but perhaps you live near us. How then can we make a treaty with you? Which means if you live near us, we have to sack you from your land. Because God had given them the entire land. Making a covenant with anybody in the land means you permit the person to live in the land. So these people came with worn out clothes, dry bread, pretending they are traveling from far away place. But a lie. They knew the only way to survive the power of Israel was to become part of the power. They made a covenant. They deceived Israel and got into a covenant. Israel interrogated, did interview, did all sorts of stuff. They lied. And after that, it was not long, they discovered that these guys had deceived them. They were angry, but they told them that we have already made a covenant and we have sworn an oath and we cannot touch them. And they called him, why did you deceive us? Now, we are going to punish you. You will become our servants. He said, oh, yeah. oh pare, it is better to serve you and live than to fight with you and die. We just want to be part of you. He said, okay, we shall condemn you. You shall be woodcutters and water fetchers for the temple of our God. He said, before Uncle, we shall serve your God. Am I talking to somebody? They accepted the condition of service. Let's just serve your God and live and not die. They entered into a covenant. By entering into a covenant with Israel, by extension, they connected the power of the God of Israel. 
Hala tele bro le aprando li hey. Linde le keto li bala. Be careful who you are connected to. The day you walk into the life of somebody, you are walking into the life of either credits or debits. Liability or asset of the person. In God, no liability, only asset. So what happened is that Gibeon that was doomed to die by revelation connected the nation that God made a treasure possession and by connecting and submitting in service they took advantage of the power of their God that is why the day of the battle of Gibeon became the day Joshua amassed the whole army of Israel and God could not keep quiet because his people were involved covenant covenant God is involved. There may be somebody you are meeting on the block in school and you talk carelessly, but when the person is involved with God, if you mess, you are messing with the God of that person. That is the reason. You know, what happens in secret court is a corruption of the power of covenant. The devil has no power to create. The devil corrupts what has been created. The devil understands principle. He corrupts principle to make it attractive to human. So that human now, they choose the one of the devil and deny the reality which is that of God. The power of covenant is the power to cause the sun to stand still. So the whole issue of Bukania trying to look for somebody and whatever we look for somebody. When somebody touches you, you say, let me see where you belong. And when you long, belong to a stronger cult, you win. That's a deception from Satan. The real cult is God. Yep, that's my cult. Yahweh. The maker of heaven and earth. The battle of Gibeon became the battle of Israel by covenant association. And by the same token, became the covenant of, they became the battle of God. Because God was the God of Israel by covenant. If you want to live, you stand with life. Just God says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. If you want to live, where will you be? Jesus. If you want to live, you be you are in Jesus. Life is God. If you want to live, you live in God. And this life is reduced to Jesus. This generation will be generation Jesus. By the force of grace. I have made a covenant with God I will not die. Until I see Jesus, the greatest brand and the greatest trend. I want to see Jesus as the trend of my generation. And the trend of the generation of my children until Christ comes. I want to see it as the addiction, the greatest drug. The greatest drug that will make people high. The greatest brand that will make people rich. The greatest story that will make people powerful. Jesus is life. When you are in Jesus, you tap into the ancient, eternal power of God. Now, the only day in history, according to the Bible, that the sun stood still was in the day that Joshua fought with the enemies of Gibeon. It was not even the day that Israel fought against their own enemy directly. It was a day that Israel fought against the enemy of their friend. That was the day the greatest miracle was done in the skies. For you to see the power of connection. The power of covenant. Finance is hidden in covenant. What flesh and blood is telling you, hide your money from God. Oh. Don't shh. my pastor. Oh. It's true. 
Many people, before they come, they make covenant in their heart. Even if somebody dies, shh, keep your mouth shut. If your wife will want to tell, shh, are you pastor's wife? Say, I'm not. <laughs> now, what do you concern you? We came to church. Power is in covenant. Victory is in covenant. Deliverance is in covenant. Because he knows me, I will rescue him. Because he's connected to me, I will honor him. Blessing is in covenant. You can never be alone. Liverpool, they are sung all the time. In their den, you will never walk alone. It's a corruption of the reality of heaven. In a covenant, the real Liverpool song, which is the heavenly chorus, is that you will never walk alone. If you walk through the waters, I will be with you. Through the fire, I will be with you. That's the power of connection. It does not matter. Shh. Do you know why mothers have power to offer their daughters into witchcraft? They say don't have children and they don't have the power of connection. And the greatest power of connection is not the flesh and blood that connects a mother to a daughter. It's the covenant of grace that connects a man to a God that ruled and the God was the only God. And when you tap into that covenant, because of you, your mother can die in misery. To prove God covenant in somebody whoever said you shall not fulfill destiny, the time of burial is now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Covenant is powerful. Gibeon saw the greatest miracle. Gibeon didn't even need to fight. Foreigners were fighting for Gibeon. After all, Gibeon had surrendered. And the God that Gibeon never knew was serving the purpose of Gibeon. Do you know your God can serve the purpose of your children even when they don't know God? If you walk in a covenant. I tell people the greatest reason to sow seed, to make sacrifices and to serve God is not even to buy a car today but generations to come. Your children could be stranded in a foreign land and they don't even know how to pray Psalm 51 or Psalm 91. And the God of covenant you served will rise and speak to a president and a new constitution will be inaugurated just to change things for destiny. Lift up your two hands and say, Father! That's the revelation I have for my generation. We need to come to the place of knowing God. Not at the church level. Not at the, at the doctrine level. No, whether, you, whether you are free to wear trousers or not. Who told you? It matters. It matters whether God is your God. And you are a chosen race of God. A treasured possession of God. Every other thing is secondary. And can be changed in a flash. If the main thing is settled. The deception... Somebody was coming to talk to me in the office the other day about going to a particular church where people, before they go on the bike, they will remove their jewelry and put it in a box. And everybody stands like a sister, a brother. <laughs> they just wanted to be right in church. But outside, they don't believe in that nonsense. And they go back to what they believe in. And God doesn't hold them accountable because he didn't worry them. When you know God, God settles with you. God settles with you. The greatest desire and longing of God is that you may know him. And the power. When you know him, you can wake up in the morning. Your habits can change 130%. The things you used to love to do instantly, nobody tells you drop. You drop them. The power of relationship. I will never do doctrine. Doctrine changes no doc. When I came to that conviction, I swore with my life, I will never waste time over doctrine. I will talk about revelation. And when you walk into God, God will, God will unveil himself to you and your life will, will, will take shape. And, will take shape. Take shape. 
and then issues of doctrine can become secondary things we can never place second thing first first thing is god doctrine is a way of explanation of the way we relate with that god but doctrine in itself is not god it has no power to save anybody go tell your pastor that's what i said now what i'm trying to say is that covenant makes god your ally in your fight now let's end the story be seated you know the resurrection of jesus christ is a covenant reality jesus christ said i and the father we are one as the father works so i the son goes about doing what working so the whole reality of jesus when the devil came to jesus at the beginning before he started preaching was to break that covenant this whole of kingdom has been given to me i give it to whoever i want bow down and serve me and i'll give it to you it means break fellowship with the father let him be in heaven and do let him do whatever he likes there but let us reign here he was looking for partnership the devil was trying to make a covenant with jesus to corrupt him the, co- the covenant of cult corrupts and destroys not only the man but the entire family line it takes deliverance I see children of those the father was terrible occult people i see them a lot of them are panting for life because generations have been offered in a covenant to satan just can say you are the light of the world lift our right hand and say i am part of god's solution i am god's solution to my time if you are in agreement with me, stand up, lift up and say, I am God's solution to my time. I am a solution. I am a light. I shine in darkness. And darkness cannot comprehend it. And nothing will kill me. Darkness will not overcome me. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak upon our children every covenant of violence of covenant over the lives of our destiny ah our children are already delivered in the name of jesus be seated the resurrection of jesus was a covenant response of the father peter said for death could not hold him captive why the father was faithful the agreement was i will offer my life so that ordinary beings can become your children and the father was to show that's why philippians chapter 2 for he humbled himself unto the death on, on the cross therefore the father did what raised him up and gave him a name that is above every name so that in the name of jesus that's a covenant response that means everyone who is in christ has entered into a covenant with the father through the son for the son is the first covenant connection with the father and the destiny is this because the father did not abandon the son whoever is in the son the father cannot abandon long and short of the revelation we don't have time to go into details as the give your night saw the son stand still for deliverance because israel was a covenant partner and God was involved. In the same way, whoever is in Christ Jesus has entered into eternal covenant with the Father for the Father to show himself faithful and to show him faithfulness. I speak that by the eternal covenant faithfulness of the Father unto his Son Jesus, because the Son is your Lord, his faithfulness is saving you from sickness, his faithfulness is setting you from the top, setting you free from the top. Every trap of destiny, every trap that killed your father, every trap that is designed to waste your family life because of the covenant relationship in Christ, the trap has been broken in the name of Jesus. Can I ask you for something? Will you accept Christ? The father said, just as himself said, for God so loved the world. 
he gave. Jesus is the chain that binds you to the Father. Unbreakable chain. Jesus obeyed the Father unto death. He told the Father, if it is possible, take this cup from me, but not my will. He believed in the Father. If you will accept Jesus, the power of the Father becomes yours. Do you know the greatest confidence I have? That the power that made heaven and earth, that sustains everything, is for me. I don't fear devil. I don't fear demon. The conglomerate of witches and wizards in the whole universe, they are like a lie. You know lie, those little things in the head. With my nail, I can crush them. Why? Because the power of God is my covenant asset. Not mine alone. Yours. That's what it means to be a child of God. Don't let anybody lie to you that it is ordinary. It's an ordinary Christian. God, for, God forgive your father and your mother. Who told you a Christian is ordinary? It's an ordinary believer. You are not. I have lived a life that people try telling me every day, ordinary. I've got to talk on this end. He said, walk in my walk in my camera. I can't. Shut up! If you don't know who you are, it's your fault. I know who I am. The father did the greatest investment. He allowed the son to be killed for me to live. I have a license to live. Sickness is aware of it. I have license to live. From today, as a child of God, your license to live will take you out of sickness. This program is sponsored by the Covenant Friends and Partners of Grace Family Global Outreach. You can be part of this grace revolution by becoming a Covenant Partner today. Allow God to use you. Our account details are as follows. Bank, Zenith Bank. Account name, Grace Family Global Outreach. Account number, 10142. 97863. For inquiries, please call 081 804 33225 or 090 738 38742. To all our covenant partners and friends, we say thank you. Like the widow of Zarephath, your oil will never run dry. To order for the books, messages, and other resource materials, please call or send an SMS to 080-660-46346 or 081-804-33225. Videos are also available on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Grace Family Outreach. To stay connected, like us on Facebook at Grace Family Outreach. Or visit our website at www.gracecommission.org.